Hello and welcome to EU Tweets of the Week. This week it's a sad farewell to the President, Boris Johnson's lies become evident and NATO and Russia are unable to relent. I'm Jack Parrick filling in for Jennifer this week. Like so many people, she's in isolation with COVID. She's feeling fine though, so she'll be back with you next week. Firstly, was the sad news that the President of the European Parliament, David Sassoli, had died in hospital in the early hours of Tuesday morning. We are deeply saddened by the terrible loss of a great European and a proud Italian. Reposa in pace tweeted the EU Commission's handle. To mark his passing, MEPs and staff headed out onto the steps of the European Parliament in Brussels for a moment's silence. Nelson Dordelli called it a beautiful tribute. And after the minute's silence, an extended period of applause by the people coming from across the political spectrum who attended. I went down there myself to pay my respects. It gave rise as well to a number of tweets looking back at his life. DG Meme posting this incredible photo of David Sassoli at the fall of the Berlin Wall. RIP, they said. And Miriam O'Callaghan remembered the time he said when it was cold outside that at night the European Parliament should be opened up to homeless people because it was so painful to see so many of them trying to shelter from the intense cold in the buildings that house it. And then on Thursday, Giorgio Orlandi tweeted a video from Campidoglio in Italy where his body was laying in state. President Mattarella and Prime Minister Draghi both went, but what was touching to see is the incredible amount of private citizens who went there for one last goodbye, said Georgia. He was a really good man, and there's condolences from all the team here. So from there, we move on to a politician with slightly fewer admirable qualities. Despite having said he didn't attend any parties at number 10 last spring, the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson stood up in Westminster and said he had, as reported here by The Guardian. I didn't realise it was a party, tweeted David Webb, mocking Johnson's excuse that he thought it was a work event and he only stayed for 25 minutes. The hashtag Downing Street parties got tons of action, as you can imagine. And don't forget to bring your own bottle, tweeted Harry Shadow, with a picture of frontline health workers exhausted in the floor. You'll remember, that's how it was back then. And you know you've really lost the high ground when Ryanair can pile in on you. The company's official Twitter posting a new set of summer in-flight drinks containing ingredients like a dash of deceit. Alex Bellas tweeted live footage of Johnson riding it out. In that video though, he falls off the horse and at the time of recording, Johnson is still clinging on in there. And Hannah Al Othman suggested how Theresa May might be watching it all. We still haven't forgotten about you running through those fields of wheat, mind you, Mrs. May. <laughs> now, while it's all fun and games on Twitter, Johnson's entire explanation for not resigning immediately was that everybody has to wait until the results of an inquiry into the party come out. He doesn't know well enough what happened, even though he was there. And as Harry Zeffman tweeted, while Sue Gray, who's conducting it, might be independent-minded, she's a serving permanent secretary in the civil service. She works for the government. She's not a judge. Now, less snarks and larks and more bites and barks this week as Western nations faced off with Russia over the build-up of 100,000 troops on its border with Ukraine. After a Geneva meeting between the USA and Russia, Linus Linkovicius tweeted that while Russia reiterated it has no intention of attacking Ukraine unless Ukraine provokes it, it means that Russia's military adventure can basically happen at any time because Ukraine provokes all the time by its sovereign existence and its audacity to resist. The spoof Darth Putin account said Russia wants NATO to honour a promise it never made, while they want Russia to honour several promises that they did. Tricky. And while NATO is standing by its open-door policy for Ukraine to potentially join the alliance against Russia's wishes, a meeting of the NATO-Russia Council in Brussels followed on that Geneva meeting. The blue-ticked handle of Ukraine tweeted to ask people to stop calling it a Ukraine crisis. No crisis, it said, just a bad neighbour. And this meme was doing the rounds. Ukraine, asks Putin. No, my crane. 
And while there were plenty of talks between Russia and the West, as Alexandra von Naaman pointed out, some issues can apparently only be solved at the leaders' level. And you know what that means, Brussels bubble friends? More summits. That's it for this week on EU Tweets of the Week. Join Jennifer next week for more snarks and larks in the Brussels Twittersphere. Ta-ra.